welcome to the Let's Get Ready podcast. I'm your host, Marissa Spagnoli, and let's give a very warm welcome to my very first guest on LGR. You may know him as Gaming with a Spray Tan, Kylie Jenner's favorite fan, or Northwest's bestie with a K, Colt Paulson. Colt, thank you for oh, coming. Cr- oh, cr- yes. I am so excited to get ready with you. Oh, my God. I feel like this is this is actually my first ever get ready with me. <gasps> Oh my god, I'm taking your get ready with me virginity. Ah! With a K girl, with you're K. taking it. Oh my god, I love that. Okay, so I reached out to Colt and asked him some of his favorite products. And we decided on some Kylie Cosmetics and Eight Million Tequila. Because is it really a Kardashian get ready with me without some tequila? We're trading out Don Julio for 818. For that's 818. for tequila. You're welcome, Kendall. And that's the new vibe. Um, just maybe not so many shots because I will be on the floor. Um, but so before we get a little messy, I want to talk about the products that we're going to use and why we love them. So Colt, what are your favorite Kylie Cosmetics products? And then you can go into like, what else, whatever else you use. Yes. Well, as the Kardashian super fan of yes. all super fans, yes. genuinely, I love the Kardashians products. I'm devastated that KKW beauty is no longer because that body foundation got me through so many pale days But I do have to say, Kylie Cosmetics is stepping her you-know-what up. And I feel like everyone has been on social media like, do people buy it? Yes, people buy it because their products are amazing. But I have to show... Well, first, this is Gay Man with a Spring Chance, like, number one thing I always do every time I get ready. What is it? It is my first step. And yeah, we have a little bit of makeup on already because we can't be coming on... Same. I was like, I'm not coming on your bare face. Like, that's not Kardashian of us, girl. It's not. But Kylie's Lip Plumping Glosses... I put this on before I do my makeup because I feel like I always get makeup on my lips. Yes. You I have to wipe it off. Feel like I currently so have I might so as well have a little gloss barrier and getting plump lips while I'm doing my makeup. Yes. Mm-hmm. I didn't even realize that Kylie Jenner had a lip plumper, which I'm like, that should be her number one product, honestly. But Well, it just came out. That's the thing. It took her a few years it took to her get a couple this. of years. I'm like, Kylie, mm-hmm. can we get the Kylie lips without breaking the bank? <laughs> right? <laughs> that would be nice. So we start with a lip plumper. What's the lip next plumper? Step? And then we do the whole face. But here's face. my favorite thing ever. Yeah. It is one, what is on my face? And I get the most questions asked all the time. Yeah. Kosas skin tint. This is what I use as my foundation. You like it? Okay. It's beyond. Because your skin looks great. And I've noticed that your skin always looks great in your videos and cards catch Thank up. You. But I remember I tested it in the store and I made a review and I was like, this is oily as hell. So, but it doesn't look like that on your skin. So well, this is because I feel like when you have a thick foundation or whatever and you put powder on top, that's where you get cakey. Yes. But I feel like with this and then the powder foundation, the setting powder, the blushes, the bronzer, like yeah. it's not too much. Like I feel no. like that's what sets the oil is the powders. Yep. I so agree. then I don't feel caked. And let me tell you, I used to cake my face so much. Like I thought I was literally Kim with the whole contour. To where my Same. mom would be like, you need to relax. Yeah. And I'm like, are you just being homophobic right now? Like, boys do wear makeup too. <laughs> You're jealous. I know, I literally looked a hot ass mess and she yeah. was trying to help me, but now I figured it out. Yeah, we all go through those stages. It's better to go through them then than now. So, we have the skin tint and mm-hmm. let's talk about some Kylie Cosmetics. What are we going to be using to get ready? Okay, so now that we're with the Kylie Cosmetics, majority of everything I use is Kylie. So, the bronzers, yeah. I have two shades, which I haven't put on yet. So, when okay. we do our little get ready with me, yeah. we'll, we'll bronze up. Okay, my two favorite shades, yes. Tandem Gorgeous is my contour shade. Okay. That I use. Okay. Let me show you. It's like I'm in new for another. See, I should have gotten that because it looked dark, but now that you're saying you use it as a contour, it makes as a little a bit more sense. Yeah. Then when I'm done with the contour. Yes. Uh, almond. <laughs> almond. Okay. <laughs> the almond is my bronzer yep. shade. So I'll do okay. a light little touch of bronzer. Yeah. And okay, Kylie Jenner taught me this trick with her blushes. These are the best blushes ever. Like I have come prepared. Bomb. What shade do you have? Oh my god, what 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 color did you get? I got feelings neutral. Ah, me too. I have it. I have a too. Oh my god. That was just it's out of favorite. pure coincidence. Love that. Perfect. So Kylie puts the cream on after her powder. Oh, you don't do that? That's what I do. No, I just started doing it because Kylie told me so. I put the cream over the powder. Kylie personally told you this? 
Can we talk about that? Well, for it was a in, your, in your video. Oh. I feel like she DM'd me, but she did I'm a like, whole video of like, I like to put it over okay. my powder. That's what I do. And like, I never really realized that was weird, but I always, I use like a really big fluffy brush for the bronzer mm-hmm. because I just want it like even and just easy airbrush. So I'll use that. And then I'll get either my fingers, which is my favorite tool, or this kind of like a blush brush. It's a little dirty. And I'll just put it in there and then just like tap it on my skin. Mm-hmm. So that's just funny that. Me and Kylie have the same makeup technique. What you were giving her the tips before she even knew you were giving her tips? Probably. Oh, probably. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dead. And then I literally also the highlight. Kylie's highlights are my favorite. This one is the shade Salted Caramel is my go-to. Okay, amazing. And Beyond. then what do we do for the lips? We have the, well, the oils. lips. I keep them. This is done. I'll leave this on. I'll wipe it off with a makeup wipe when I'm done if there's any excess. Yeah. And then the lip oil is my go-to all day. I just lip oil it up. I agree. And I'll apply a little plump later. This one is the shade um, Bubbly. This is the clear one, Bubbly. But they have all different colors exclusively at Ulta. But the lip oils, oh my God, do those turn me on so much. I love them. So I've never tried a lip oil before the Kylie Jenner one. So yeah. I got it and the applicator, I feel like I want to like chew on it. It sounds so insane, but it's it's probably the best applicator I've ever used in my life. I, I don't know what the I, Dior one's do like, but- And all you got to do- Oh, it's amazing. And it really, it really hydrates your lips. 100% say the lip oil or the bronzer, 100% because the bronzer lasts all day. That's what oh, I've noticed. The like, powder, I, I don't have to have anything underneath it, and it lasts mm-mm. all day. And I'm like, all right. Oh, okay, Kylie. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, so as we get ready, I'm going to start asking you questions. So you can start with whatever you normally start with in your routine, and I'll just like kind of ask you okay. some all about Colts. Like, what was Colt like before the K, you know? I live for it. I'm going to take my glasses off. Yes. Oh, we're fully glammed. Because... This is the full, this is how Colt does his makeup. Yes. We want to see it all. I want all of it. So, <laughs> ah, okay. all right. So excited. I'm going to start with bronzer because that's normally what I start with, but you can start with Same whatever. girl. My little Same. contour bronze. Yes. So, can you tell us, so you're in LA right now, currently. Los LA Angeles. Los Angeles. So, where are you from before are you from LA? I don't think so, right? Girl, I am from Nebraska, a very small town, 4,000 people. Oh my um, goodness. It's called Cozad, Nebraska, in the middle of the, the state. Nebraska's the middle of the yeah. country, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, I went to school in Omaha. Okay. For college. So college. I lived okay, that's what I was going to ask. Omaha for four years, and then right after college, I moved to Los Angeles. So... To pursue a dream To of, pursue a dream. I was going to ask you why... Why the move? The so move, I, oh my God, I wanted, I want to be an on-camera host. That was yes. like my life goal. And I was like, LA is where it's at. And I really needed to find myself too. Um, yeah. In that sense, because Nebraska was amazing. And I capped out anything that was possible that I thought for me to do, I did it. What was that transition like going from Nebraska to LA? Like, was that easy? I feel like that was probably easy for you, but was that like a culture shock at all? Because Nebraska's definitely very different. I don't think it was a culture shock in the sense of I've watched LA. I've seen Keeper of the Kardashians every episode. I knew somewhat and all like the reality TV I watched, like LA was always there. Like I loved Paris Hilton. I wanted to do this like that. Like I wanted to be in LA. I think the culture shock for me was figuring out how to do everything on my own. I have no family. I had no friends. I moved here not knowing a single person. Wow. So for me, that's what was the thing that was like, Oh my God, are we going to do this? Like we're doing it. Yeah. I feel like that's the like hardest part with anyone. How did you, I mean, obviously I'm assuming you made friends now, but like, how did you like kind of get past that space? Like I'm here, like I have no one around me. Like how how did you get out of that? Well, I came here with no job, not one thing lined up. Oh, no way, really? Oh my God, yeah, no job. I came out like a month earlier to find an apartment with my mom um, and my sister who lived out here for, two years, like when she graduated college Okay. and no job. So as soon as I got here, that was the first thing of like, bitch, get to work. Like you need to find a job. So I literally, there was, I lived in Burbank. Okay. And the Glendale Galleria mall was like not too far. Okay. So there was, I was applying for jobs at the mall because I worked at Abercrombie, like I've retail my whole life. Okay. Um, so I applied for Bloomingdale's and then I applied for guests and I got interviews at both. 
Okay. And I was like, oh my God, like, this is so cool. Like, I'm going to yeah. be the next Anna Nicole Smith. Like, I yeah. want to be a guest girl. <laughs> Absolutely. No, the guest girl is such a moment. Oh my God. Yes. And that's like imprinted in my brain. So I feel that. But go on. So I uh, did an interview at both. I got the job at both, but I ended up deciding to go with Bloomingdale's um, yeah. because... One, Bloomingdale's is iconic. And we don't have stores like that in Nebraska. So that was new for me yeah. to have like a high-end department store. And yeah, I decided Bloomingdale's because I knew it would be a lot easier for me to like have people cover my shifts. Or like if I ever called out, like I wouldn't feel bad because it's like more a, staff. a department store. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, yeah, there's a whole team. And of course, I worked in women's denim because long behold, then Bloomingdale's started to carry Good American. And here we are now. We my are. whole life is revolved around the Kardashians. And it's not that. because I choose it. Like, it just happens. It just happens. And that's okay. So with TikTok happened after the pandemic. I moved to LA yeah. wanting to be an on-camera host. So the first thing I did was I joined a hosting boot camp, like a workshop. Oh, So okay. I did that every single week to learn how to host, how to interview, do questions, do this. And... I had the best time ever. It was called Become a Host. It was Marky Costello. Oh. She had a reality show on E! at the time called Drama Queen when I was in high school watching. And I was like, I want to do that. Like, I want to do her boot camp. So when I moved to LA, I was like, I have to do her boot camp. Absolutely. So she taught me everything and beyond on how to just be a good interviewer, or a good host. And a lot of the content creation that I use is based off of things I've learned journalism like anything in college I learned with like how to do a news story like I really implied that to my content so I did that for years and then TikTok it was after the pandemic and I was just like you know what I'm on TikTok watching scrolling I didn't want to join it because I was like Ugh. were I you had, against it too <laughs> I was, I was against like, it because in high in high school I was on Vine and I had 70,000 followers and no it was way. dead it died yes so you were like a little like hesitant scared to go on TikTok like, it's not gonna last it's not gonna this last. won't be here forever so I'm not I want to be a host I don't want to be on social media anymore yeah but then all these haters started coming for my girls and I said they don't even know what they're talking about let game with a spray tan come in because we cannot be having you talking shit about the Kardashians when you don't even know what you're talking about we need at least one Kardashian safe space you know what I mean on the exactly. app we and need at least one the... we do yeah well it started off as a spray tan safe space I was like my bio Okay. And I wasn't, I was not solely Kardashian. I was just posting whatever I felt. Okay. And then it was just like, oh my God, I like love doing this. I'm like so conformed. And then I was like, no, this is a Kardashian safe space. Like that's my purpose. Yeah. So it was kind of just figuring out what hit and bitch, it hit. It with hit. The K. So what was your content like on Vine? I can't believe like I have, maybe I have seen you on Vine and I just didn't realize it. But oh, bitch, you see content? me. Do you remember a video where it's, it was my caption was how to walk up the stairs sexy and it's me running up the stairs and falling and I'm like <laughs> Shut jumping up. down and be like, Lucy, ow. And my dog popped up in the back. I feel like I absolutely know what you're talking about. I, that I, was me. Iconic with the K. I mean, are iconic you kidding? And pre-planned with a K. I don't think I've ever publicly said that I did that on purpose you for did? views. Tea. And honey, from then and there, game. Well, I wasn't gaming with a spray tan. I was just a closeted gay man at that time. But okay, so <laughs> I was born. It, you were born. That's okay. I mean, it worked at the time. So how yeah. did you like come up with the name gaming with a spray tan? Obviously, you're a gay man with a spray tan. But like, yeah, how did how did you get that name? So from that boot camp I was in, and that was kind of like a thing where like you kind of learn your brand and figure it out. And Marky was like, I want to hear from the gay man with the most perfect spray tan. And, and it, then one of the it. other people that were working the boot camp was like, that's your brand. You're a gay man with a spray tan. You're a gay man. I'm like, it Wait has a minute. such a ring to it. It's, it's ridiculous. It's crazy. And that's my most passionate. It be like, I feel like I love, no, I love the Kardashians more than spray tanning, but I <laughs> genuinely love spray tanning. Second. Like it's the only thing that gets me through everything is a spray tan. B Brown studio is the best and she's coming out with self tan. So I'm excited to try her. Oh, product. I would so try that. Oh my God. In a minute. Yes. Oh my God. Okay. Exciting. I remember you recently mm -hmm. said in a podcast, you interviewed Farrah Abraham. Oh my like, God. Yeah. Farrah have you Abraham. Stop. Please spill the tea on that. Like, what is she like? What was that interview like? And then who else have you interviewed? Oh my gosh. Okay. So that was my, that was when I was kind of like figuring out what am I going to do? And my whole brand was reality TV. Yeah on-camera host, and Farrah Abraham is actually, she was born in Nebraska, lived in Iowa. I never met her, but she was kind of working with Marky to kind of help her with hosting things and some opportunities uh, from that hosting boot camp. Yeah. And Marky hooked it up and had like the little setup for me. And like, I got to interview her 
And I'm still shook because I don't know if Farah actually knew that I was interviewing her. <laughs> Or if Marky like just did it as like a little bit of a favor, like, oh, come in, we're going to do some stuff. But I live for Farrah Abraham. Like reality TV to me is like Bible. Oh, like, it's I my love Bible it. too. I, that's all I watch. It's such a sense. Oh my but, God, like, beyond. It is and, like you it want is. people that are going to cause some drama and be like entertaining. So Farrah yeah. Abraham to me, she's a legend in the reality TV space. And I will say she was the so sweet because right after that, she had a birthday event the following night and she let me come to interview on the red carpet so that was my first ever red carpet interview experience that's for amazing. gaming with the spray tan.com beyond that's so nice of her to do that i know that is I know. so she nice was amazing. that's that's but awesome i haven't talked to her since but i did gift her like my 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 self tan like routine i got all the products to like thank you for letting me interview you yeah and she wore she did it herself and wore it for her birthday iconic that is amazing that yeah you're a legend i'm like i feel like that's so cool that's like i'm like why haven't we heard about that so, before and then that i did one so more cool. interview yeah. with desi williams from survivor who's a friend okay um so those are my only two interviews but i'm excited for the future because i do feel like the world needs a super fan's perspective on everything because i'm a fangirl for everyone yeah absolutely so, so. you're saying you're a fangirl for everyone we know you love reality tv so aside mm -hmm. from the kardashians what do you watch? Who are your, do you, are like, are you a housewives fan? Like beyond beyond same. Okay. Get into oh my it. God, I love Bravo. NBC has the best reality TV shows ever. The Bella twins total Bellas is my maybe I'll start show of all shows and it's coming back and I'm so effing excited for it. That's funny that that's like your like go to the Bellas. Oh my God, no, I was a WWE fanatic. Really? Yes. <laughs> That's but awesome. I just love the divas. Oh, of so course. It was like, of course. When Total Divas came out, it was my two worlds colliding the reality TV world and the WWE world. So I live for them. I love that. Now to go into like cards catch up. So, yeah. congratulations, by the way. Like you Thank went you. from like loving the Kardashian super fan to being on, I want to say like their platform. Like E is, is, what we know is like the Kardashian safe right? space. Well, the show <laughs> Cards Catch Up is on keeping up with the Kardashians YouTube page. <gasps> oh my yeah. God. Is like big, big fan cult like dying inside? Oh I my God. Big fan cult. Can't even believe this is my life. And it's like the best thing in the entire world. That's so amazing. So how did Cards Catch Up happen? Like, did you, like I, in my world, I feel like you pitched it like Kris Jenner pitched keeping up with the Kardashians. But like, how did this yeah. come up for you? That's so major. cards catch up to me was the most, I don't know. It's like, it was meant for me. Like I just yes. knew from the very beginning that was meant for me. When the Kardashians ended, I was devastated and beyond like, yeah. what am I going to do with my life? Like they're done, they're gone. And I was just like, holy shit. But I started posting on TikTok and I thought that for me was the perfect campfire starter or whatever you however you say that saying yeah yeah but the fact that they were off air everyone needed someone somewhere to go to get their kardashian fix and that was game of the space on tiktok and everyone yeah. was on tiktok so once they announced the hulu show it was kind of like this build up to the new shows coming but we haven't seen them we don't know what's going on and with e they needed something to do with the kardashians because they can't just leave the Kardashians, like Hanging. their whole network was Kardashian. <laughs> they have 20 seasons of a show. Yeah. So they approached me to see if I, they were like, I, we think you'd be perfect for this. Um. So I auditioned for Cards Catch Up and it was just solely a Kardashian recap show. I love it. And I killed the audition and I, yeah, they were like, oh my gosh, we're, because of you, like we're taking digital creators serious. Like you nailed it. I'm like, no, this is what I've been like working for. And my yeah. whole time on TikTok was never about money. It was never about anything other than I need to just show the world who I am and I want yes. to be a host. I want to yes. host a show. And that was my intentions and it worked. And uh, now Cards Catch Up, me and Amanda Hirsch, yep. every Thursday. Iconic. <laughs> I love it. Um, no, but I feel like TikTok is really, it, it's the same for me. Like I started right when the pandemic kind of started. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, I feel like TikTok is the place for people to get their foot in the door where they couldn't before. Now we know that the cards catch up is just solely about Kardashians, but would mm -hmm. you ever like talk about other things in, in a talk show? You know what I mean? Or are we like Kardashian until we die? 
Well, I'm Kardashian until I die forever. Yeah. I think that's just me and that's my blood. Given. But I do think for me, it was important not really to overstimulate myself and really just focus on what I know and what I'm passionate about. I think with yeah. people on TikTok, they're chasing views, they're chasing likes, they're chasing trends. Yeah. And that was not my priority at all. My priority was just good content, yes. informative content, positive content. Yeah. And I think that's what makes me stand out to where people know Game Man with a spray tan because 18,000 people could post about one topic, but does their opinion really matter? Yeah. So I'm I'm happy I did that because now when I do branch out to other things, which I will, yeah. it's a built-in audience for me because I'll have the people that follow me for the Kardashians, but then I have so many people that follow me just for me, which is the most heartwarming and like, oh my God thing ever. So I love each and every one of you guys. Absolutely. No, that is so amazing. So just because you, you're so close to a million, I feel like you're like a day away oh. from a million. That's congratulations with a K. That is so amazing. Girl, speaking of with a K, can we take a pre-celebratory shot with a K? Oh my God, we haven't even done that. Million? Yes, uh, bitch, absolutely. Get the 818 Let's out. Let's do it. And also whoever's listening, I didn't mention this before, but whenever we say with the K, you better take a shot. And I feel like that's if, like the... A drinking game of all drinking games. Uh, yeah, you're going to be blasted by the end of this podcast. And then if you hear Stormy Baby by either of us, that one counts. You need to take two shots. Storm Stormy Baby. Stormy Baby. I'm drinking right out of the bottle. Are you? Oh, bitch. I got a glass because I thought you would have a glass, but I, I was planning off out the bottle. Well, when Chloe and Court, didn't Courtney and- They drank <laughs> it out the bottle. We're drinking it all out the bottle. Girls. Chloe right. and Kylie did it out of the bottle, so that's what we wanted to do. Cheers, cheers with the K. Cheers with the K. Oh, my God. I have to say, like, I'm not a tequila girl, so you really can't take my opinion of this like that seriously, but this is the smoothest God. thing I've taken a shot of ever. So you were kind of talking about, so we're on the million followers, almost there, um, and you kind of briefly just mentioned it, but I wanted to ask you, what is mm -hmm. your peak and what is your pit about having your platform? Oh my God, my peak and my pen. Uh, right? See, this is why I love the Kardashians. Like, we all get it. Yeah. Okay, my peak of having a platform, I think for me, it's just going over that hurdle of like being, what is it called? Going over the hurdle of being embarrassed of who I am. And I think that was something I always had a fear of, of like, oh, even like with dating or friends or guys, or I'd be like, are they going to think I'm weird that I just like love the Kardashians this much? Yeah. And for me, that was kind of a block when I moved to LA. I didn't want to be the Kardashian super fan. Like I really was like, I'm more than that. I can do more than that. So I didn't really capitalize on big fan like I should have, but oh, I'm happy okay. I didn't because I got to figure myself out. And then with this platform and people embracing me for my love of the Kardashians, we all have our one things that bring us the most joy in life. And no one can take that away from me. And I think I'm living proof that your joy is millions of people's joy. So just enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, that's so good. That's my and then, peak. What's your pit? My pit? I think my pit is, I mean, I don't want to say the hate online. I think my pit is, well, there really isn't a it pit. It can I mean, be. I if if that's your pit, that's probably my pit too, <laughs> honestly. I think that is the pit where people think, the pit is, people think this is my one thing that's, the, all I do, all I do is talk about the Kardashians where it's like, no, that's the one thing you only know me of. You've seen this one video and you're just thinking you're that's all I do. That. Like I've been working retail the entire time I was on TikTok. I landed my dream job. It just so happens to be a Kardashian recap show, but I am a real person who has real interest in real things. And I yeah. think people lump me in with Oh, he's just a psycho super fan. But it's like, no, I'm just the super fan. Not no, psycho. <laughs> I'm not crazy. A little bit. No, I feel like a lot of people don't understand sarcasm. And oh my God. Tell me about it, girl. That is like, that's my, my number one problem. Times. No, I think, and that's the thing I think people, they're not as super fans. Like the people that follow me, they get it. They get the jokes. They understand yeah. it all. Like, like you, this is the peak in the pit. If you're a fan, you know, that's what the Kardashians do all yeah. the time. They used to do it all the time on keeping up. So I think the people that comment, and hate on me and are like, are you serious? Like, they don't get it. Like, they don't get the vibe. And that's not for them to get. And I'm not going to stop being me and doing my Kardashian jokes and my sense of humor because you're not, the joke isn't landing. 
The joke wasn't for you, honey, but we're on the Kim and Kylie Air, so we're landing our own private jets. You can fly commercial, bitch. Yeah, fly commercial, bitch. I'll see you later. So I want to talk about the big fan game show because I was watching your stories. I I have creeped you so hard. So obviously, like Colt and the big fan game show, looking at you now is probably like shook as hell. Oh, you know what was so crazy? I swear you knew Kim's life more than Kim knew her own life. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I did, girl. I mean, I didn't get any questions wrong. Kim no, got questions that's wrong. That's what I'm saying. She got questions wrong about mm-hmm. herself. And I was like, did you study for this? Or did you, is this just like an inner knowing? Oh my God. So the funniest thing is it was finals week in college. Okay. My oh, intense junior junior year, I think, 2016, we filmed. It aired in January 2017. And I failed all my finals because I was studying <laughs> so hard on the Kardashians. Like, I need to find my quizlet and I had every <laughs> fact you could think of about Kim and I had it on loop and I all I did I watched old episodes I wrote down things every single thing that was on the show was in my quizlet and even like the tiebreaker was about how many selfies were in Kim Kardashian's selfish book and you were like were, did you know I thought you guys guessed it right if not like you were so close I was so close because I knew the page number that one pages, is what shook like, me okay, I was wait, like he knows that pages some of the books have like four pages on it. Some have one. So I just kind of did my math. And yeah, the fact that that was like tiebreaker, like it was like such good TV, but I yeah. obviously, thank God I won. No, that was, I mean, of course you won. I feel like who yeah. else would be able to answer those questions? I think it's so funny that you were saying you failed your um, finals or didn't do that well yep. on them because it's just funny. Like you took your time to study with the Kardashians and honestly, clearly it paid off. Like my dad would always make a joke and be like, if only you would take as much time studying as you did doing your hair and makeup before school. Maybe we'd have better grades, but who needs the grades when you're here? (laughs) Oh my God. And all that hair and makeup led to this moment. Exactly. And all that Kardashian led to my moment. So it's like, I think that's the one thing I'm also excited for when I have kids is like just embracing every single interest they have. Yes. Because I could only imagine feeling safe in the sense of my own home of like, I could talk about the Kardashians if I wanted to. But yeah. I never could because my yeah. family just didn't like it. They were like, yeah. they didn't get it. It was just this. So that's why I really dived into the Kardashians because it was the one thing and the family that I knew. I was like, if I was in that family, they would love me. We'd have so much fun. Like yeah. I could do whatever. Like they're open books. Like that's my life goal is to be an open book. Like I just want to tell the world I'm gay. But like it's <laughs> so I that's why I love the Kardashians so much. And yeah, they helped me through a lot. So I think. I'm very blessed for them, for yeah. sure. Oh my God, what made me laugh about the game show thing? Do you still have the jacket? The Kim jacket? Uh, yes, I will never get rid of that. <gasps> I have it here. Please like make a TikTok on that someday and just like... Well, fun fact, I, today when I was like, oh my God, I wonder if she's going to ask me about Big Fan because I'm like, that yeah. January is the anniversary, I think 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, six years ago. Oh my God. So I want to do a whole TikTok about it. So I'm, I am going to have to give me out that. You have to, you have to do it. Like I'm, yeah. I'm going to be looking for that TikTok specifically. That's my like most prized. And like, look, that's the fan I won right behind me. Oh my God. I didn't even notice that. Amazing. Oh God, yeah. Can I see it? And big fan. Oh, I get it. <laughs> it took me a second. Big fan, but look. It actually works. Girl, the fact that this has a charger and I have never charged this in six years and it still works. <laughs> that means it's good quality. So <laughs> Like, thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Oh my God. Oh. You can like set your like setting spray with that. That's what I would do. Oh my, li- I would oh my just... God. Maybe it might get ready with me. Is I'm going to steal that. I'm going to, any um, com- commission I get off of those, I'm going to cut you a check for that idea. Cause that's, <laughs> I'll that's take, it. what is it? Chris Jenner takes 10%. I'll take 10 or five. I'll take either okay. one. I'm not going to be that picky. <laughs> um, So after the game show, obviously you've met like all of the Kardashians. Mm-hmm. Um, Have they ever mentioned the show to you? Like, have they ever mentioned- brought it up? Like, after the show happened, like, has Kim ever been like, oh, my God, like, you're from the big fan game show? Or has that just been, like, a one and done? That was a one and done until I met them. So, really, I Kim tweeted, I think she liked one of my pictures when I was in high school. I had, like, her Kimoji butt float or college. Oh, the Kimoji butt float. Yeah. She Love liked that. that. And then she did tweet me the day the show aired. And then when her documentary came out on Oxygen, um, she tweeted quote tweeted me so I was like oh my god but when I met Kim the first thing she said at Kylie Cosmetics event was I haven't met you yet and I go no I was on the big fan and she's like no I know like I haven't met you since which oh I was like bitch remember me (laughs) I don't know 
She no, got she skinnier and I got a little chunkier, which I think that's <laughs> how is that even possible? But oh my God. I just am dead. But I know she obviously, if she, but I did pray. I literally prayed. I was like, can I, when I ever meet Kim, please make it a memorable moment for the both of us. Yeah. And that's the game show happened. So definitely memorable. You really got to dream big because shit happens. You have to. And I feel like that goes into like, um, manifestation too. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like low key, you manifested this. Like you've always yeah. wanted to be a host. You've always wanted to do this and be in this realm and you got there. Um, which amazing. Congratulations. Thank and I wouldn't you. want to see anyone else. Like I love your content. Truly. Um, I love you. Oh my God. Love you too. So now that you like, you're in your dream job, you're doing mm-hmm. what you love. I want to ask this to like all my guests. I'll always bring up Chris Jenner. I, this is my favorite quote because I just have related to it so much. Like if someone tells you no, you're talking to the wrong person. And I just think that is like ultimately the best advice anyone could ever have. So has anyone like told you no on this journey that you were like, no, this is a yes. And I'm going to get this yes. Like, How did you get it? Oh my God. Well, I do have to say, I am working through the fear of rejection. Yeah. Like I feel like hard. I... I'm the biggest person that like won't ask Mm -hmm. because I don't want to get a no. Yeah. (laughs) I'd rather just not ask. Yeah. But I do think luckily I'm like the type of person that a lot of things have worked out for me and have been my favor. But I think where I'm at now, like the amount of times I applied for an NBC intern or a mailroom person or anything like, Oh my God, the amount of applications I sent NBC careers is crazy. So But I never, ever gave up. I never stopped posting. And I think when they all said no, it was like, okay, well, I know I'm going to work for E. I know this. I want this. It's Kardashian. It's me. I took it in my own hands to just show them. Instead of waiting for someone to give you the yes, show them the yes. That's my thing. Like, it's like, I don't care if you think that, but like, I'm going to show you and prove you wrong. But like, ultimately you wanted E. So it's like, it makes sense why you got those no's. But I think that it's so important to like keep going and not stop. Um, was there any moments that you were like, I can't do this. Maybe I should just not. Or did TikTok just really like take off? And then you were like, this is it. You know, I've never in my life been like, I can't do it. I'm done. I've never. Cause Good I knew you. the deepest down inside me. I know exactly where I was supposed to be in like, I knew I was going to make it and everything would be fine. And I think that's where it starts. And like, even right now, the amount of people that are calling me delusional on TikTok is insane. But I just want to tell them, I'm like, where was that? The TikTok trend was be delusional. If you want something, believe it, think it and do it. And I don't think I would have got here in LA by myself if it wasn't for me being delusional. Absolutely. Of just the sense of- In a good way. (laughs) Yeah, in a good way. You couldn't tell me otherwise. And that's why like, Every single hosting audition I've done, yeah, I never ever got a booked a job ever. Every self tape, every this, but my first hosting job is a my own show on E News. Like, are you kidding me? But I do think just my willingness to like, okay, that didn't work out. Well, now let's go try something else. Or oh, that didn't work. Like, let's do this. Like, I never set my stone on just one path. Like, it was always just like when I really when things really started to change for me, it was when I told myself every day, I don't chase I attract what's meant for me will simply find me. I know it's a TikTok audio, but it changed my life in the sense. Yeah, I've dreamt of everything I ever wanted. And I'm living it right now. So why would I worry? Like looking back to myself, I'd be like, why are you worried? Like, you're gonna get to meet the Kardashians, they're gonna film it for the show, you're gonna be there, you get to work for E! News and like, oh my god, you're on Kylie Cosmetics PR list. Like, if I could just tell myself then I would be like, screw it. No doubts, no this, no that. Like I would just live my life. So I think you have to live your life because it could be like that. Your life you could You never know when it, that's going to happen. No, I totally yeah. agree. And I, I'm glad that you brought that up because it always, like for me and like my like career mentality, I always think about like, this might be very niche, but like America's Next Top Model. You know when someone wins, yeah. like you you already know they're mm-hmm. going to win, but they're like in the bottom two or like they're freaking out. They're like, oh my God, I don't know if I can do it. It's like, if only they knew they're going to make it. You don't know like what's going to happen. And you know, like if only you knew, that's my thing. Like if only you knew what's going to happen, like you wouldn't be stressed. But then, yeah, but that's the best part too. It's like not knowing. Not knowing. Because but, like, here, but then I say that, like, I don't know it, but I deep down always knew. So it's like, And let's be real. Our lives are all planned out for us already. I always say, oh my God, that's so funny. Cause me and my best friend always say like, 
like I don't whatever you believe in you believe in but like I just think like it's all written out like a book like it's gonna yes. happen no matter what you don't have a choice whether you like it or not that's what's gonna happen I totally agree with that fully I fully. feel like you're like me do you ever just pretend like you're in a confessional like audio <laughs> do you wonder why I'm doing this <laughs> No, I love the confessionals. I'll be doing makeup and I'm like, so. <laughs> Today. Yes. No, absolutely. And like, absolutely. Fully. I definitely think that we're very similar in that aspect. Yeah. Oh my God. But like you mm -hmm. said, like, that's the beauty in not knowing because it's like, you have an idea of your path, you know your passions, but it's so exciting to know, like, who knows what could happen? Like, who knows what opportunities you're going to get? Like, I've never, never, ever, ever had an idea of doing a podcast. It just randomly came to me. And like, you know what I mean? Like, I never thought that would be part of my path, but like you accept it, you get excited and I just think it's all meant to be. So that yeah, is so and like, great. We're all in different eras at different times. So right yeah. now I'm in my Kardashian TikTok era and yeah. I'm going to enjoy it. As and the next should. era that comes, I'm excited to do that. And I know it's going to be even more epic mm -hmm. and it's all about just being happy. And I think that's a lot of people struggle and it's hard to find out what really does make you happy. Yeah. So I'm very lucky that it's easy for me to just flip on my phone and scroll to a Kardashian's Instagram and be happy and forget everything in life and just take that moment to just enjoy the positivity and just being a relaxed, happy human. Yeah, no, I love how positive you are. And like that aspect that you bring to your TikTok, because like you said, like I, you're the Kardashian safe space. I feel like I'm like the Kardashian war zone <laughs> at the time. Oh my God, girl. Oh my God. Literally, I'm not that negative. I, like I, I shouldn't swear. even be here right now. I know. Actually. It's like, you just reminded me. Like blasphemy. I'm sorry. <laughs> we won't talk shit today. I swear. I'm like, I'm a Appleton lover of the Kardashian. off limits. No, we're not oh, talking. Oh, we're actually going to bring that up later because I have a question for you. I also wanted to go back to how you met the Kardashian. So I'm assuming like after the game show, you met them at events. So yes. like we know the Kardashian events are like, they're to die for. I'm sorry, but there oh is nothing God. better. Like, I, I'll make fun and be like, okay, like to my friends, I'm like, all right, the Kardashians, I swear, will launch a product just for the launch party. But at the same time, mm -hmm. who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? Uh, <laughs> who wouldn't? If you have the money, why not? What are those events like? Like, being in there, like, mm -hmm. do you get anxiety? Or are you like, I know I'm meant to be here? Like, what's that like? Well, now I'm like reliving everything. I don't think I, I got anxiety when I got invited to the 818. 818 yeah. day party where she launched her um eight reserve so that i got anxiety because the kardashians were actually going to be there but i was invited because obviously 818 and i have a relationship they invited me to join them for pride and their yeah. team and i like oh my gosh we hit it off and as m and i am so blessed that i got to meet all the people that are really behind the brand because i feel like that's the best part about being an influencer is yeah. the brands you love you get to meet the people that make it happen like they're just like us they're just it's everyday so people it's their job yeah. yeah, you would never guess. It's, it feels like so like higher up. But then when you meet them, you're like, mm -hmm. oh, like you're just like me. Like you said. Yeah. yeah. So and I loved how 818 and they all love me. Obviously, they're like, your videos are amazing. We love you. I'm like, thank you. Like, it's just nice to hear that. Yeah. My content is appreciated. But what that event gave me the most anxiety because with the Kardashian press event I went to, that was the first one I ever went to. The Kardashians were there, but they weren't there at the yeah, same time. Yeah, they weren't like, like no with you them. kind of thing. Okay. Yes. This event, I'm like, oh my God, are they going to be here? And these interns were like, no, they're all on the list. Like they're all on the guest list. So I'm like freaking out. So I would be like sweating. I, oh my God. It was, but the most delicious food, the most delicious places. Like the first one was at Nobu. This one was at Soho House Malibu. Like yes. they go all out. But the 818 event was everyone like in the alcohol industry there was only a select few of influencers yeah um but it was very intimidating and i only got to meet chloe and kendall at that event okay um because i was just so nervous and i'm not about to go to vip and like insert myself even though now, i now looking back i totally could have you could but i, but I'm, I was the like, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm the same way you're like not yeah yeah you don't want to be like in vip much. i'm just a guest happy to be here i'm gonna yeah. enjoy but that event, my mom came with me. She was in town. I was like, can I bring my mom? Aww. And they were like, oh my God, bring her. So that was my like, That's uh, awesome. thank God. Yeah. But the Kylie Cosmetics event, I will never, ever forget it. Because it was the, before I even went to 818, Jennifer Cohen emailed me being like, we want you to come to this event. Like the Jennifer Cohen. Yes, yes. No, she, so, the Jennifer Cohen sent me this. And I was like, how the fuck do you know me? But yeah, oh my God, I the died. The queen, Jennifer Cohen, I love you, girl. But yeah. so when I went to that event, and I knew the cameras were there. It was just like this out of body experience of like, sweetie, this is your moment. You've dreamt of this. 
it's time. And I just, there was no fear. There was no nothing. I was really living in the moment. And I just, the whole time was like the biggest super fan. Like I screamed in Chris Jenner's ear and I'm like, oh my God, I just screamed in Chris Jenner's ear. Like I literally, bitch, I looked at the cameras because yeah. me, Chloe and Chris all wore the exact same outfit. Basically. I was going to bring that up. Like was that, that wasn't planned. That just happened. No, not planned at all. I recreated <laughs> Kylie's pink suit from her old so when she went to go buy and she forgot her wallet. Oh yeah. Do you remember that meme? Yes, I do. So that's why I wore it. And with, I, oh my God, this is so embarrassing, but I literally yeah. look at the cameras. I go, Hulu, who wore it better? Oh my god! So if that's on the show, as you I'm should. Freak out. As I hope it is. I on you should be on the fucking show. Oh my god! With all but, that you, do. I mean, they were filming that moment. I would assume they're gonna show it because it's iconic that we all three were in the same thing. But that moment, yeah, to for me, team. it was like it's your time. It's your time. I know. I always say to you, like, whether you believe in God or the universe or whatever, like mm-hmm. you're not given these opportunities unless you're ready. And one hundred percent, you're ready. And you can tell. I feel like in your pictures of that night that you like. You just exuded confidence. You just looked so happy. And I'm like, he's in his element. Like, this is amazing. I really um, did. I mean, as much as I, like, love being a Kardashian, like, when you're around them and there's cameras and you're, it's like, vividly remember just looking and being like, oh, my God, I'm in an episode. Like, it's not that I'm, like. you still watch them. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. And, like, you see the cameras, you see them, and you're like, it's, I literally felt like I was watching TV. It was the wildest thing ever. But definitely, I mean, because of TikTok, I do in those moments, I'm like so excited. And it's like, no, Game of Thrones is time. Like people want me to be there. Like yes. we love to see him happy in this. So I do feel like those events are my happy place. Yeah. And how lucky for me that I get to say that. It's amazing. It's yes. So lucky. And then, so as you like meet the sisters mm-hmm. and Chris, was what's like different about like knowing them online? Like we all know them online and we have our like assumptions about them. Like what? Did anything surprise you about any of them that you're like, oh, like, okay, any of that? I think the biggest surprise for me was just how, because I feel like I'm also in the TikTok mindset where everything is edited perfectly. Like when I'm doing a little clip, there's the beginning and the after, but I crop it to where it's just the clip. Yeah. So when I was at the event and we were taking pictures and it was like, Chloe had to take a moment to look at the pictures and be like, oh, I'm not really liking that. Like, it was wild to see them in a a human experience of like- Yeah, almost feeling Like insecure, analyzing these pictures. Yeah. And that was right when Chloe got her remo- or her mole removed. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, the, or whatever, the skin cancer. So she had a Band-Aid. Me, I don't ask questions. Like, that's no. the one thing I wish I asked more questions. But I'm like, not my business. Like, I don't need to ask. Yeah. So I didn't even acknowledge the Band-Aid. But she was not. She's like, I don't really feel confident today. Can we do a filter? And I just wanted to be like- oh my God, like you exude the most confidence. Like you inspire me and millions. And like, it's it's wild to really hear it in person to be like, let's put a filter on. Like, that's so, so that's where it was like, oh my God. Like those little moments where it's not like their Instagram stories. It's the things that are after. Yes. But um, they all were just like the show. Like when I talked to Courtney, really? it was just like the way she talks, the whole, she was holding Travis's hand the entire time. Like, And she's like, do you want to meet Travis? I'm like, yeah, I want to meet Travis. Bitch, of course I do. (laughs) Of course. So I feel like they are exactly like the show. They are stunning in person. And they genuinely are like the nicest. Like Kim, I will have to say, I've never met anyone nicer than Kim. That's amazing. I feel like that's like a perspective that we don't get. And like you said, like Mm -hmm. the whole filter thing, I feel like humanizes them a little bit. Like you said, like it just makes you feel like, you know what? If Chloe feel like she's a filter, like we all do. But Mm -hmm. I think it would be nice to maybe see them like more raw because I think that would be like so relatable have they ever given you advice like I don't know how like deep in conversation you've gotten with them because you've given me great advice based off of the Kardashians and you can get into that if you don't have advice that they've given you but is there anything that they've like taught you or said you to know you? I think that's the one thing where I have open dms but I'm not gonna dm like yeah. I'm not that type of person that's gonna be like bothering I'm just so blessed and grateful for everything that they've given me and invited me to and like the platform because of them yeah so I don't think they have to give me advice because I just take the advice they give to everyone and I think that's what makes me so special in the sense of I am still just a fan and I just when they do an interview I still utilize that it's not like I could be like oh let me just dm Chloe and ask her for advice like when Chloe wants to give it, she'll give it. And I'm going to take it when she gives it. Like, yeah. so I think that's where I still enjoy being a fan. Cause I don't have 
the the access like people think where they think I'm just like what do you guys want me to post today like OMG, I know that's like, like so I don't ridiculous have that. no of yeah. course not no um maybe <laughs> maybe one day <laughs> but I feel like you've given me great advice once um just about like your own personal brand. I mean, they're the queen of brands. You know what I mean? Whether yeah. we all want to admit it or not, they're the queens of the brands. They all have a successful brand, whether that's based off of their fame and notoriety or not. But um, you mentioned once, like, you always want to be in control of your brand. Is there anything that you can kind of, like, go off on that about or just... I think you? the main thing with that, I feel like I've learned everything in life from the Kardashians and yeah. watching their every move. I understand the marketing, the this, the that. And I think it wasn't until TikTok where I really embraced it and had fun with it. And even now, I mean, on TikTok, I'm getting dragged for cutting ties with Jordan Woods. But now cutting ties is a part of my brand. So <laughs> I'm taking it. I'm cutting ties with yeah. this. I'm cutting ties with that. Like, I think that's the fun part. But you want to be in control in the sense of no one knows you better than yourself. Yep. And don't let anyone tell you who you are. Yes. And for me, with a K... I mean, I'd say it all the time and now it's intentional You've of like, I need to, it. yeah, that's your turn. It. And I want, I genuinely am putting it in every video solely because that's my brand. Yes. But I think that was the fun part of like, I would say that even before, and it became a thing because I started saying it. Yeah. So it it's fun to find your brand, but it is also, it's exciting to like branch out and do new things. But I think don't let anyone tell you what your brand is because they don't know. Exactly. You know. You are the only person that knows your brand and it's important to just like listen to that little voice and be like, no, that's not it. Do you. And if people don't align with it, it's not your target audience. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just not. And I think yeah. also like, I know I remember telling you like my first brand deal was at 600,000 followers and I got 500 so bucks. Are you kidding? That's all. Like it's genuinely not a thing because a brand's budget might be capped out at a thousand. And if I genuinely love a brand, like, I'll do a video for a thousand because it's on brand for me. Like I'm yes. going to accept something that works for my brand because at the end of the day, your brand deals are not for the brand. It's for you. Like yeah. you're putting your face in there. And like, I'm so lucky that any brand I've worked with has a tie to the Kardashians in some sense. Yeah. <laughs> and it makes sense. And because I waited so long to do a brand deal, when I did my first one, the comments weren't even about the brand. It was about, Oh my God, you did it. Like you got a brand deal. Like we're so happy for you. Yeah. So it's for like an accomplishment. me, yeah. And like, that's my goal is not to be brand after brand after brand deal. It's yeah. working with brands and like creating fun content that would make sense for me. Yes. No, absolutely. Yeah. I think that's really important because there are so many people that will just accept it and it's just random, but I think yeah. um, people trust you more when you take brand deals that align with you, align with your brand, your morals, mm -hmm. your ethics. Like, I think that is so important. That's one thing I learned from the Kardashians because I'm not going to lie, when I was buying the Sugar Bear hair, the 15... <laughs> no, you bought it? Okay. Of course it's okay. I did. I, I was bought shit upset. too, so like, it's, it's really... <laughs> No, no judgment. I'm like, no, I would never do this to my people because I bought that fit tea thinking I was going to get a Kylie Jenner body. Okay. Tummy, like, yeah. I oh my God. Bought legit. It. So now so it's bad. like, no, you want products that you actually use. Yeah. I, yeah. Like you said, the Kardashians are a great example of like mm -hmm. sometimes what to do, but what not to, what do. Not to do. And mm -hmm. I think you can obviously learn from everyone's mistakes, but would you ever go from cult with a C to cult with a K? Would you ever? That is like my most asked question of my life. Really? I think it's not, I'm not opposed to it. I definitely <laughs> think it would be a moment. I be. think for me, I wouldn't do it unless like I'm marrying someone that has a K last name. Oh, yes. Or I genuinely- I hope think, that happens <laughs> for right? you one day. I, well, I really hope girl, so. My saying is I want to marry into royal, oil, or Kardashian. So those are my three like non-negotiables. Amen. So pray As to God for a Kardashian. But I think if I ever fall off, which I know I won't, because I will never let <laughs> never. that happen. But I'm like, imagine like, oh, gay man with a spray tan changes his name to Cole with a K. Like that would be a good little <laughs> that'd comeback, be a great headline. You know? No, that'd be a yeah. great headline. Speaking <laughs> of name changes, now we'll get into the blocking situation. So yes, um, let's talk about how Jonathan Food God Chobani Oats. Um, why yes. did he block you? Like, why was that even a thing? Because we're both blocked by Kardashian people in the Kardashian circles. But like, why were I you know. blocked? You're the like the safe space. Well, I'm gonna say, I don't know, that's what I was most shocked about. Like, why would you block the most supportive person in the entire world when it comes to the Kardashians? 
I still to this day do not know the exact moment, but getting to meet him at the Boohoo fashion show for oh, Courtney, yeah. I if I was not hired by Boohoo to be there to interview, <laughs> I think I would have definitely maybe not gone up to him. Yeah. <laughs> but since yeah. it was my job, like you, had you know, to. I'm there to do this job. I need to interview Food God. And he just said, you're like, oh, here you are. Like, you're horrible to me online. Like, he was just, like, over it. And I'm like, what the hell? How am I horrible, horrible. to you? Take sarcasm lightly, please, people. Yes. Like- so, but the real reason is I was more horrible to him after he blocked me because then it was, like, a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. That's, yeah. that's what they don't understand. It's like, it makes it worse when you block us because now yes. it's my personality trait. <laughs> exactly. And, they, and I told him, I, and I think once he was there and he realized, like, I said, thank you for blocking me because... I was a nobody. And once you blocked me, that just solidified me leveling up. So, yep. and then we filmed the TikTok. And after he's like, oh, you post our TikTok yet? Like, how's it performing? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. Post follow me back. <laughs> but he I does follow out. me on. So you're unblocked. Not unblocked because my account was disabled for copyright. Do not even get me started on that. Oh, that's so weird. Okay. Um, So he blocked that account. And since it was disabled, I don't think he's able to unblock me because he probably did every other account. <laughs> but he follows me on TikTok. So I'm very okay. happy for my friendship with Food God. Food God. I'm like, uh, what's his name? I forget. No. <laughs> no, that's just too funny. I know. I feel like you just shouldn't be blocked in general. Like I said, like you're the Kardashian Never. safe space. Well, and you shouldn't you- be blocked either. Um, no offense, Chris Appleton, but I've made plenty of video. I made him like a brand video. Like, why don't, why doesn't Chris Appleton have his own brand? Like, that just makes no sense to me. Like, I know you're the creative yeah. director of Color Wow, but like, you're an icon in yourself. Like, I've always respected him. So I'm like, I never even mentioned your name in the video, Chris. I know like your name was written in the screenshot, mm-hmm. but like, I never said like, Chris Appleton, what the hell is this? Like, I was just like, Kim, if anything, not that I want Kim to block me, I don't, but like, also, it's not like you, the whole yeah. internet was saying it. It's not like it was just you. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, I wasn't that harsh. Okay. What's your favorite Kardashian brand? And what's your favorite Jenner brand? And then I'll have okay. another question my, for you. My favorite Kardashian brand is Skims. I'm wearing okay. the boyfriend collection shirt right now. Yep. Obsessed. I cannot get enough. And then my favorite Jenner brand. That's tough. It was always 818. Yeah. But Kylie Jenner... I'm going to have to see Kelly Cosmetics because I'm on their PR list and she did <laughs> shut me out as her favorite fan interaction of 2022. I, yeah, you have to give so her Kylie Cosmetics. Okay. And I also feel like she's stepping it up too. Like I made videos Very before so. where I'm like, Kylie, what are we doing? But at the same time, yeah. when you use our products, they perform well. And as a makeup artist, that's all that matters. I, I'm, I'm all about the branding. we have to realize but... she also was postpartum. Like she's finally getting her groove back. So yeah. I think she, the Kylie Jenner that we love on social media is back. She's, she's definitely back or at least coming back. Do you, okay, so I know we're a Kardashian safe space and you have to answer this. Is there like any Kardashian brand that you're like, or Kardashian Jenner brand that you're like? Poosh. Okay, Poosh. Oh my God, I love your honesty. Well, where was you- my, where was my PR package Poosh for your holiday collection? Poosh has the best. I've never gotten one. I know. <laughs> I've like, never gotten one. Of all the but brands the I want best. a PR package from, it's, it's Poosh. Poosh. It's like, she the has best. you covered. Like, that's underrated. I have to say like Poosh has like, I don't know. She's on her shit. Well, with I that. will say the, but and also I don't utilize one. the website. Like I'm not a person that goes to the blogs. I've never and been a blogger it. reading this and that. So yeah. I think it's just not for me, but I definitely am obsessed with Lemmy. I think the marketing and everything is perfect. Yes. And I use those gummies every day. So every Kardashian has a good brand and good American. Yeah. The clothes I've been like so lucky to work with them in the sense, but also be able to like wear all this stuff and wear get them. this no, stuff. They're- and, like, you make me want to yes. buy Good American. I'm telling you right now, like you're my source that like has sold me, and like I will make yes. a Good American purchase ASAP, ASAP. But like, yes. if you ever had to have like a collaboration with any of these brands, what one would you collaborate with, and like why? But what would be your product that you collab with? Like, what would it you be? know, I think my before I started posting on TikTok, I know Kim did um, a lot of her fi- other. Um, let me restart that. Kim had a skims campaign where her fans were a part of it and they had billboards in LA. Like that's what I love about the Kardashians. They treat their fans so amazing. Like I remember yeah. my Lisa is one of Kim's biggest fans as well. And she had a billboard and I was just like, Oh my God, it's possible. Like anything is possible. So I think I always was like, Oh, one day I'm going to be in a skims campaign. Yes, but now you will. I'm yeah. like, no, well I'm at the level now where it's like, 
dream bigger because one day I want to have a Kylie Cosmetics collab. Like, I want to do that. Like, could you imagine lip kit with a K? Lip kit with, I'm like something with a K. It has to be with a K. I'm like either a spray oh tan, God, a like, lip I kit. I feel like the with a K collection. Like, so. <gasps> with a K collection. I'm going to make yeah. you a video on that just alone, but with a K collection. Yeah. We need like, that. Like, imagine it would be epic. And I she would also love that. like loved just being able to, like, I worked with Good American at their um, yes. open casting call. Yes. So I think that was really fun for me. And it's like fun to, because I mean, I've been supporting these brands my entire life. So now getting to work with them, like, well, I remember going to the Pride at with 818 and they yes. were all cleaning up. And I was like, grabbing this, grabbing that, all this stuff. And they're like, Colt, you do not need to do this. I'm like, no, I have to do this. I want to be a Kardashian <laughs> employee. Duty. Yeah. I'm going to take the trash out. I'm going to do this. Like I'm working. Like I want to be a Kardashian employee. So it's fun. I love that. And I feel like they definitely respect you just for doing that. Cause you don't have to do that. You know what I mean? Like um, that's yeah, like, no. half these influencers would be like, yeah, thanks for the tequila. I'm out. Like, you know what yep. I mean? Like, I think that Where, really no, shows I was like, I want to do it your all. love for them. Yeah. No, as you so. should, I feel like I'd be like, do you need help cleaning up? Like I'm here. Yep. I yeah. was like ready to do it. I <laughs> thought that was more fun. Cause I'm like, I'm an employee. Well, that's really all I have for you today. Unless you think of something else, but. Well, thank you. Thank you. I literally live for you. I'm so excited and proud of you. I'm like honored to be your first episode. Thank you. I'm honored to have you as my first guest. Like it's insane, but thank you so much for your support and just being you and your content. I love it. And someone needs to be the Kardashian safe space. You know what I mean? Exactly. We need one and it's cold. So I'm so excited to see what you're going to do with that and everything else in your career with the K. Thank you, Tal. Yes. I know. Gay man with a spray tan on TikTok for all of your Kardashian needs. Please follow, like, subscribe, whatever. I love it. And just once again, thank you so much for being here. I loved it. Of course, Doll. Great interview. Doll, I love it. Cheers. Should we take one last shot? I think we just should. As, a, as like a cheer? Yeah. And while we take our shot, I have to plug Cards Catch Up every Thursday on YouTube. As you should. Cheers to Cards Catch watch. Up. Watch it. I will. And dare I say, with a K March coming soon. <gasps> with a K. Please. Oh, my God. Cheers yes. to with a K March. I will be the first one in line for that. I will yes. be at the drop. Oh, my God. That's so okay. good. Oh, okay, I, I am so excited for that. I hope you do come out with March anyway. I mean, we're doing it, girl. Ah. I'm going to have to get your advice. You have the best branding advice, though. Oh, so. please. I'll give you honest advice, too. I'll be like, yes. Thank you. So oh fun. my God, this was so fun.